Hello and welcome to Zanata Consulting's beginner series. This is going to be a video on Zoho projects where we're going to cover the initial setup and kind of a walkthrough of the settings that you want to take a look at as you are getting started with Zoho projects. Uh, so my name is Tyler Colt and with that we'll get right into it. Um, so as I've opened up projects here to access all of these kind of baseline settings, we're going to want to navigate up here to the top right under the little wrench and screwdriver for the setup options. And so within here, they break these down into a variety of different categories. We'll kind of walk through a bunch of the ones that you want to knock out first as you're getting started. Um, so first going to drop you into a profile page. This is just some basic information. You can log a you know, profile picture for yourself, change some of the aspects of the theme, swap things over into dark mode if you prefer that, um, and also set up your baseline landing page. Um, that's kind of a nice little bit of functionality just because these different pages are going to give you a different jump start on what information you're seeing. Um, so if you like to pull things up and you know see it in a calendar or see it in kind of a Gantt chart view, um, you can set up your default here. Kind of moving down some of the personal settings, um, we can determine here what types of notifications should be going out and based on which types of tasks. Um, so these are actually set up per user. So you could decide which types of notifications you want to receive on your various activities within Zoho projects. Um, additionally, for the organization, we can kind of set things up across the board and say what our default setting should be for notifications. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is just going to depend on your own preferences of you know, what types of actions should be sending you emails. Um, down the line here, these are just kind of some default reminders that will go out, kind of roll up style reminders. Um, so things around kind of what's pending, what's going on through, with your daily digest, um, tasks that are unassigned. So this is kind of a nice one that you might want to have hitting your inbox every day. It's just a quick little roll up of any tasks that aren't assigned to an owner. Um, of course, things that aren't assigned are probably not going to get done. And then lastly, we can get a little roll up of all overdue tasks that are th throughout the system just sent to your inbox every day. Um, so you can subscribe to these or choose not to just based on your preferences here under the activity reminders section. Moving into the portal configuration, now we start to get into some of the higher level settings here. Um, so as default, we can set up who emails should come from if we want to have a default sender. That would apply to those notification emails that we just talked about. Um, if you don't set one, it's going to send them as a Zoho Projects email address. Um, you can also determine which URL you want to have for Zoho Projects. Um, so if you wanted to basically apply a different little slug here for your URL, you can do that. Um, one reason that you might want to is if you have any client users or external users accessing Zoho Projects, you might want to make sure that it's branded specifically for your brand. So if I spun this up and accidentally put, you know, demos in Auto, maybe I would want to change this later before I invite any uh, clients to look at the projects. You can also customize the full domain name if you map a CNAME record over here and get that verified. So if you wanted to really replace the entire URL, you can do so. Uh, last little quick option here under configuration is renaming issues. This might be called rename bugs, depending on which edition of Zoho projects you have. Um, you know, they, they defaulted to bugs in a lot of cases because they built this originally with the idea of supporting software development. Um, but really, these are just a uh, record related to a task that basically is identifying we're stuck or we're having an issue here. So you can rename them based on how you'd like them to display. Um, jumping into a next one, a quick bit of settings here around date and time configuration. Um, so you can determine kind of what's your calendar week, what time format do you want to have, what date format do you want to have. Um, one element in here that actually is pretty important to set up is the weekends. Um, so really what you want to do is unselect Sunday and Saturday. The main reason for that, and we'll actually do a video on this um, in this series, won't cover it on this video. Uh, is that if you have a long planned out project template and you create a project from that template, the system knowing which days are weekends will actually allow it to skip those days in the project planning. So you won't have any tasks with a planned start date on the weekend. Um, so just a quick little thing that'll make your projects run a little bit smoother, especially if you're working with templates. 
And moving down the page, we can go ahead and set up a particular prefix that gets assigned to all projects. You'd have like DE1, DE2. Um, this just helps you keep track of things a little bit easier with a numbering system. Um, then we can also determine how we want to determine um, a completion percentage of a project. So, you know, we can either do it based on just the count of completed tasks. You can do it based on percent completion of tasks, which you can actually track based on your work hours. Or you can do it purely based on work hours, um, looking at the tasks and issues. Um, we can also determine some basic settings around our budget if you are doing budget tracking here for projects. So if you have that turned on, right, you can determine, hey, do I want to receive an email when we're reaching a certain threshold of budget? Do I want to receive another email if we're going over budget on a project? Um, so kind of a couple different ways if you are doing any budget tracking to keep yourself in the loop as projects are getting completed. Um, lastly, here to some of our settings around tasking and timesheet management. Um, one little setting that you can do here is once a task is completed by default, it's going to kind of drop itself to the bottom of the task list. And depending on your filters, you might have a, a view for open tasks, closed tasks. But sometimes you just want to see all tasks, regardless of if they're open and closed. Having this on will mean that when you complete a task, it will not move it in the list. So if you wanted to get that kind of hierarchy of how everything looks, you might want to have that turned on. Um, of course, you want to have our task prefix turned on. One here is that you know when you have a task, if you set a start and an end date on it, it's going to calculate a duration. Um, depending on the way that tasks work for your company, you might want to track that duration in either days or hours. Um, oftentimes I'll do it in days, but if you do kind of plan out a day of tasks, or maybe you actually set that start date and time for everything, then you might want to track it based on hours. Um, moving down the page here. You can determine whether you want to see resource allocation as you are assigning tasks. This is really helpful. Basically, what it's going to do is if I choose a particular user and I have some work hours assigned to a task, as I'm picking the due date, it's going to show me uh, that person's workload with kind of a color coded calendar. Um, so kind of helpful to see if you are diligent about using work hours. That'll help you make sure we're not overloading anybody. Um, last couple little ones that you'll want to take a look at is around task dependency, which we'll do a full video on uh, down the line here. Um, but a couple different options. If you have a task that is dependent on another, you can decide whether you want to move a um, successor task based on the predecessor. So this would basically be the case where maybe a project is running ahead of schedule and you move a task forward in the start date. If you have this on, it will move that second task forward as well. Um, you can do that same thing by extending due dates. So if we were to move something back, it'll kind of cascade everything back from there. You can also choose whether you want to kind of automatically move to those next tasks based on completion rather than start date. So generally you want to have that on as well. And then of course you can set up your default dependency type just looking at, you know, if you want to have things running finish to start, start to finish, start to start, or finish to finish. Nine times out of 10, I find myself using finish to start, where you're kind of moving this task gets completed, then we move to task two, then we move to task three. But if your use case requires that you do anything else, you can set that default right here. And so the last kind of high level section we're going to take a look at in this video is going to be user management. So the user management inside of projects has a couple different bits of functionality that you want to be aware of. Um, of course, under manage users, a portal user is a user that's at your company. Um, so here you can go ahead and add a user and just get them set up. If you are on Zoho One, this add user button is going to redirect you to that admin panel and you can add the user from there. If you're just using projects, it will just pull up the uh, user information page that you can input and send them an invite. Uh, the second piece here is looking at your client users. Um, so within Zoho Project, you can actually invite clients external access to particular projects. Um, and so the client users kind of gives you the ability to do that. Um, in this case, we have our CRM integration turned on. And so as we created a project underneath a certain account, it pulled in that company as a client company. 
And from here, if I wanted to add a particular user, I could just go ahead and add them here and determine which projects they should be a part of. Of course, a client user shouldn't just be able to see all of our projects. We'll have to particularly assign them to the projects that we want them to have access to. Next thing around user management is creating teams. Um, so teams, as you would expect, are really just groups of users that are part of a certain uh, organizational role. So maybe I want to have an operations team and I want to assign a couple users to that team. Um, and what we can do, and it's, I don't think it's going to let me do that with only one user here, um, but the advantage of having teams is that a task can actually be assigned to a specific user or to an entire team. And so if you have a group of people that are looking at a task list, um, they're kind of working it top to bottom. Um, using teams is a good way to get it on a multiple people's task list without having to assign it to a particular user. Um, so a common use case of that is maybe you have a handoff between sales and operations, and we don't know exactly which operations person is gonna do a particular task, but we know that one of them are, you can go ahead and just assign it to that team. Um, lastly here, we have the profiles and roles within Zoho projects. Um, you know, the profiles here are really what drive things. This is where you can set up someone's permissions to view reports, create new projects, um, you know, work on things that maybe they're not assigned to, kind of all of your standard permission settings here. Um, they come out of the box with kind of a handful of standard user profiles. Most of the time, these are going to cover your needs, but if you do need to make any edits, you can, of course, add a new profile. Secondly, they have roles here within Zoho projects. These, to be totally honest, don't do very much. They're really just an identifier. Um, most of people's permissions are really going to be driven by the profile that they are a part of. Alrighty, and with that, I think we have covered what we need to cover here for our initial walkthrough of the uh, overview settings for Zoho projects. Um, of course, we hope you found this video helpful. And if you'd like to stay in the loop with any other tutorials and webinars that we post here on YouTube, be sure to subscribe down below to stay in the loop. Thanks for watching.